We're going to be ranking Travis Scott's albums, solo and collab albums. Let's get started with Owl Pharaoh. To me, this is a Travis Scott project that I'm just not able to listen from start to finish. I, I don't have any replayability whenever it comes to this project. I don't even have any memories genuinely associated with it. Now, an important thing to note, my introduction was with Days Before Rodeo. And even though I was aware of Owl Pharaoh, I just didn't feel like listening to the, the big state from start to finish at that point in time. And then as time went on, eventually more albums got released and I will revisit Owl Pharaoh. It just sounded a bit too raw and unpolished for me, but not in the same way I love that to be with Days Before Rodeo. Like the way Days Before Rodeo is compared to Owl Pharaoh, it's just my thing. The only two tracks that I genuinely go back to is Upper Echelon Baby when it comes to the mosh pits, when it comes to that energy, raw, crazy, super saiyan energy. I love Upper Echelon and Katana Part 1. Just not, not because I love the trap, but whenever I do listen to Katana Part 2, I always look, like to go back to Katana Part 1 just to sort of remember the difference, to see the evolution. So we're going to go with a nice, solid average. Average for the fact that I can't sit here and give you every track on the album. And if I'm not able to do that and I lack my own experience with it from start to finish, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and make it seem bad. It's just average. From what I listened to it, it wasn't bad. It was an enjoyable experience. But honestly, I'm not going to be revisiting this project much. Now, 2014, the year I got introduced to Travis Scott, Days Before Rodeo, a crazy blockbuster for me. This album, the raw, gritty, dark, trap energy, trap sound that we get from Travis Scott was mind-blowing for me at the time. And everything from Skyfall with Young Thug and Metro Boomin going into that beat drop, Young Thug, the way they just melodically handled their vocals. It felt sluggish. It felt rugged. But more importantly, it just had that level of bass and it just demanded your energy to wear. All right, I'm loving it so far. We could go take a step back and listen to something that's more relaxing and nonchalant with Grey. Don't even get me started on the psychedelic life-inspiring dimensional travel. I think dimensional travel. We're, we getting, we're, going, we're going somewhere with this, trust me. Drugs, you should try it. A track that even if I didn't take psychedelics at the time, this is the closest thing I could probably compare to DMT. I haven't done DMT either. If Jesus Christ was to bless me in real life, it would be in the form of this track in itself. Drugs You Should Try It is an embodiment of perfection, bliss, and it might even be the fountain of youth for your ears. Love the track. And then Katana Part 2, I already discussed my love for Zombies, which is a crazy, crazy track in itself as the kid sings. And that is just building up, going on, going on, going on. Basement Freestyle is ridiculous. That could be the soundtrack for like a video game level. And I don't know. I, I would just love it like that as well. I'm damn near listing almost every single track on Days Before Rodeo. This is an exceptional mixtape project. Debatably for me, even though I objectively have another album as the greatest trap album of all time, my personal favorite trap album of all time has got to be Days Before Rodeo. And we're going to kick it all the way up to great. To great. There's a part of me that wants to give it perfect. Perfect or <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Let me fix that real quick. I want to give it a perfect, but we got other albums that just I could see the step up. So going on into 2015 with Travis Drops, his studio album Rodeo, it couldn't have been any more different from what we've seen previously. Definitely on Pond release, leaving an insane impact on the hip hop landscape, sonically influenced forever, forever. There hasn't been a trap album like Rodeo since Rodeo. Travis Scott blew everyone away. With a great intro in pornography, having some standout tracks in I Can Tell, OK, I Write, and having a beautiful song, 90210, with Casey Hill, I believe, right? Casey Hill? I remember watching the music video and being like, yo, this is beautiful. This could be a great, great, I would, I, should I say movie? It could be a great movie, but I feel like a nice, good three part series, like 10, 15 minutes on YouTube, where we could, you know, sort of follow this. Travis Scott, Giant Adventure. and Anyways, I'm sort of rambling off. Beautiful song. I remember nonstop listening to it. 
No Pray for Love, Travis, Abel, first time to link up, and thankfully not the only collaboration they do have. Now, I already mentioned OK, all right, but can we just give some credit to Schoolboy Q? And why we haven't received another Schoolboy Q and Travis collab is beyond me. I have no idea why they didn't decide to do so. And this is the album that I view as the greatest trap album of all time. It isn't something that's, you know, oh, uh, unique, I, but not in a sense that if you view it as the best trap album of all time, like, oh, man, yo, it's boring, whatever. No, it's like, I mean, we could all agree on this. I could see certain arguments for DS2 that are probably true, but I feel, I, I believe as the years go on, DS2 starts to sound a little dated as opposed to days before Rodeo, where it's just timeless and continuously sounds fresh. Now, some other highlights for me on, not days before Rodeo, on radio, radio. <laughs> Nightcrawler, specifically Chief Keef's verse on Nightcrawler. Maria, I'm Drunk. I don't love the album version. I actually enjoy the slow down, reverb, and I want to say a little bit chop version I found on YouTube because originally Maria, I'm Drunk didn't release on streaming platforms. It was only on physical copies, which I eventually got. But eventually, when I did get the physical copy, Maria, I'm Drunk just didn't sound the same. Flying High with Tori and Moy. It's a song that mm, I got a little bit of love for, but honestly, it's, it, it's whatever. Same thing with um, Wasted to a certain degree. Pray for, not pray for love, but Piss on Your Grave could have been a lot more grand. Now, this is on comparison to other tracks in Rodeo. Outside, outside looking, I love all of these tracks. The, these tracks are all heavy hitters. Ultimately, 3,500. But let's get right into that perfect slot rodeo going into 2016 having an album as revolutionary as rodeo how will travis scott be able not necessarily to make a better album but where where, where is he going from here i mean in just a single year later we got birds in the trap sing mcknight and this is my personal favorite travis scott album as much as I show love to everything, like, well, not everything, Days Before Rodeo and Rodeo, Birds in the Trap Sing McKnight, it's just, I, I could just hear the album, look at the cover art, it just reminds me of my life, especially 2016. 2016, baby, come on, you hear it from everybody. 2016, for me, that was my first year in college. Everything just completely changing from the way I already lived. And it was just beautiful, beautiful. But enough of that. Enough of that. The ends. Yo, that is a wild, wild intro. And it just, to me, almost feels, how, how would I put this? I, I don't even know how to put it. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure it out. But the fact that we had three stacks, Andre 3000 on the ends, it's, it feels like a roller coaster straight up. The ends felt like a roller coaster, but you know, honestly, what is the Astro World? Not Astro Stargazing also feels like a roller coaster, but the ends. Wild going into way back whenever we get the beat switch and then Black Youngster on coordinate. That intro, I'll replay that intro two to three times. Listen, we all love the intro for Love Sosa, but the intro for coordinate, got to give it some credit. You got to give it some credit. Through the late night with Kid Cudi was a ritual and an enticing experience. Going on through there, we have the introduction to Nav, Beebs in the Trap. First time listening to it, I'm like, oh, Travis' voice is pretty different. Come to find out it's an artist named Nav. And then the following year, he released a self-titled mixtape. And then that was also great. Go on from there. Nav, continue growing. Anyhow, SDP interlude, smoke one, drink one, pop one. Speechless. I'm speechless. Sweet, sweet. It's all, it's okay. It's okay. But not to go through everything, but outside 21 and Travis Scott for the first time. Crazy Goosebumps, Kendrick Lamar. First take, Bryson Tiller. They still haven't collaborated again. And of course, the hit, Pick Up the Phone, Young Thug Travis. Lose, it feels so, not whimsical. It just feels so good, man. I feel like I'm in a Disney movie listening to that. Disney, Lose, don't know how, but it works. Wonderful with The weekend. another collab. Another thing to know about Birds in the Trap, even though it doesn't have that, that, per, not, not perfect, how would I say? Even though it, it is in Rodeo. I found this to be a great album by Travis Scott. So I'm going to properly list it 
as great. Another thing to hear to note for me is that Birds in the Trap was the album I started going to concerts for. I believe it was 2017 Birds in the Trap tour. And then eventually I just continuously went to Travis Scott concerts. So I have more memories associated with concerts when it comes to Birds in the Trap. And I believe I could change the order. There we go. I want to have Birds above Days Before Rodeo just for the man, just for that time in my life definitely plays a part in relation to the album for the replayability and the way I'm able to be relatable with it. Now, after 2016's Grand Birds in the Trap Sing Make Night, we have Hancho Jack Way Quavo after seeing them collaborate with Pick Up the Phone. And I believe, wow, right now I'm having a brain fart. This is inexcusable for me. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh my, this side. Wow. Oh my, this side. Everybody, by everybody, fans of Travis will be like, yo, Quavo and Travis, they don't miss. It's fantastic. Quavo with his auto-tune Travis as well, but being able to have a crazy dynamic with different voice inflections, a, 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 an entire album together has to be legendary, right? Right? No, no. To me, Poncho Jack was a lazy effort by Travis Scott and Quavo. I don't know if there was a time constraint. I don't know if it's just because, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I felt this album was incredibly underwhelming. Modern slavery, black and Chinese felt repetitive. There was no it factor in there that would hook me in. The lyricism on this album was, I wouldn't say laughable. I wouldn't take it to that extent, but there was nothing, no, there was no quotables in there that made me take a step back like we've had on previous Travis Scott projects. Whenever it came to the actual production and instrumental, I found them to be lackluster as well. Nothing that captured my ears like on previous albums. And I was just like, well, it's taking me to a whole entire different world. It was like, no, this just felt repetitive, laid back to a certain extent lazy. And this is an album I could best define as Travis Scott and Quavo having background music. So we're definitely going to have Honcho Jack into the below average. It's not entirely bad because at the end of the day, there is still that chemistry between Travis Scott and Quavo that even if it's lazy, it can be slightly entertaining and catchy. So we're having Honcho Jack below average. Now, two left. We got two left. We're here. Astro World, the highly anticipated universe. Everything from the promo to the lead up to the trailer was phenomenal. This felt like something from outer space. When Astro World released, I didn't listen to it right away. About took me about two, three days. But when I finally did listen to it, and the reason why is because I was listening to Mac Miller. When I finally did listen to Astro World, I was transported into a theme park just as much as it's heavily expressed through the promotion and their own music videos. And from start to finish, it is the most cohesive Travis Scott album. It is phenomenal. The psychedelic trap sounds get elevated to another level. What well, Rodeo shines when it comes to the variety the different sounds and being able to have all of this meshed in well. Astroworld shines in the cohesiveness going from start to finish. It feels like you're going from ride, from ride, from ride, from beat switches like on stargazing to something where it's sort of like heavy and moody, but still able to just sound incredible in Houston Fornication, Butterfly Effect, a great single that was released earlier that I don't know why I'm highlighting it on here. I already heard it. I just felt like speaking about it. But going out from there, can't say Don Tolliver, a grand introduction. At first, I was like, is this Travis's vocal? But no, it's Don Tolliver. And that hook on the chorus is going to drive you insane. It's going to make you replay the button. Continuing on from there, Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite. Yosemite. Initially, when it, not, when it launched, Nav's vocals were really quiet, but I, that sort of added like a little mean fun factor. Just wanted to throw out there. No bystanders with Shaq West. Mo Bamba was going crazy at the time. This is straight steroids. Swaley, RIP Screw, not one of my more favorable tracks on here. I genuinely tend to skip it. Stargazing, a oh, ridiculous intro. I'm pretty sure you guys already heard me say this. Carousel with Frank Ocean. This took me completely by surprise. I don't believe when Astroworld initially dropped that the features were listed. So hearing Frank Ocean on this weird auto-tune pitch, sort of fast pace on this mel uh, melodic performance going on, I was like, Travis, you brought out Frank Ocean? Yo, yo Travis is going crazy on everyone. Sickle Mode with Drake, one of the most ridiculous collaborations of all time. And I mean that in the highest regard. It might have been 
it might have been played out beyond imagination, but I still love listening to it. I still do. Every now and then I'll skip. But at the time, sickle mode just elevated Drake and Travis to a whole extra level, man. Skeletons, Pharrell Williams, and Abel, Wake Up with Abel, those two tracks back to back. It was therapeutic. It was God sent. I felt the blood cells in my body continuously reproduce in a manner to which every reproductive cell that came back into existence was able to give me a nice dopamine shot. Even though dopamine comes from the brain, but don't, don't think too hard about it. 5% 10 is in NC-17 with 21 Savage. Feels like a Christmas track. Who, what, Quavo, take off, forgettable. I'm going to be real with y'all. And then I believe I'm almost listening. Stop trying to be God. Made me religious. R.P. Screw already discussed it. And Coffee Bean going into the more lyrical, self-reflective performance. All of this to say, Astroworld, perfect. Perfect. And it's going to be behind Rodeo for the fact that I, I, I believe the highs on Rodeo are a lot higher than the highs on Astral World. However, cohesiveness, I believe there's less lows to a certain degree than some of the lows on Rodeo, if that makes sense. Now, to finish off, finish off this episode, we're going to be discussing Jack Boy's a collab album that I loved. I loved a couple tracks. Gotcha. You thought I was going to say I love the album. For, for a mixtape to be released from the Cactus Jack team to be as, you know, Travis got to be as high as he is, having his crew, Don Tolliver, gaining traction, Hot Pole and Smoke feature. I would have loved more tracks on here to truly define Jack Boys. And unfortunately, we only got seven tracks, which a couple of them being some serious heavy hitters. What to do with Don Tolliver is mesmerizing, hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic. had enough with Don Tolliver, Offset, and Quavo is pretty insane. At first it goes a bit slow and then eventually just spins off into a nice direction. Gang Gang with Jack Boy, with Jack Boys, with Sheck West is entertaining to say the least. And Gotti. Gotti, 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 Pop Smoke, Travis Scott. This is the track that made me become, start become a fan of Pop Smoke. I don't, I didn't enjoy his music too much. And to a certain extent, I might have been a hater, but this is a track, especially with the music video, the visual was beautiful. Not beautiful, it was pretty badass. That had me like, yo, Pop Smoke? We Pop Smoke fans from this day forward. However, as much as I complimented very, these tracks out west with Young Thug, is not enough. Not enough. The intro being highest in the room remix with Lil Baby, which was a pretty bad performance on his end, and Rosalia singing in Spanish. I wanted new ears after listening to that track. Jack Boys on the second one, it could have, it just, it wasn't, it, it takes a bit for this project to pick up. But when it does, when we get into track four, that's when it finally starts to shine. Unfortunately, due to the lack of tracks, only seven, due to the fact it takes a bit, the first, I want to say almost like first half is pretty sluggish. We're going to have to give this an average. We're going to have to give it an average. I was thinking about giving it below average, but I do feel the second half of this project, of second half of Jack Boys, is better than the entirety of Huncho Jack. I think we could all agree with that, right? Definitely. That's it for this tier ranking of Travis Scott's discography, solo albums, and collaborative. Let me know y'all's thoughts, and we'll catch you on the next one. Got two videos above my shoulders, head, wherever. Check them out. Go into the Vivid Nectar rabbit hole. Catch you guys around.